Well, good afternoon, everyone. As Greg has said, my name is Yanga Zuele. And uh, when we did our practice um, presentations, I told everyone that I was actually the chief executive introvert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I studied journalism at Walter Sisulu University. And I work at the Bodakai Chamber of Business as marketing and communications coordinator. And today I'd like to share with you all the impact that this program has had on me. Uh, when we joined the journalism program at WSU, we had to go through interviews. The last question for all of us was, why do you want to be a journalist? We found out in our first official lecture that most of us had eagerly replied, I want to tell the untold stories. I want to change the world. As novel as it sounded when we first said it, you discover that the real world does not function quite like you had imagined. You don't go out into it with a plan and have it all go your way. Eventually, with all the forces at play and all the adversities that you have to go through, all you can think of is getting an income, paying rent, sending money home, <laughs> you know, the trail. Yeah. And the world you wanted to change suddenly becomes too big, too bad, so much that your only concern is your, only, is your own survival and your own well-being. But earlier this year, a former colleague of mine, Candice, told me about uh, this program. So I signed up. The first thing I discovered through the program was that I had kind of lost my sense of purpose. Worst of all, I had no hope that I could change anyone's life or make a significant contribution to the world. But through this program, I was introduced to many people who have taken it upon themselves to be the change they wanted to see and make a difference in the spaces they occupied, no matter how big or small. Through these people's stories, I've learned that changing the world doesn't require a job title or a massive bank balance. Three years ago, I was, I was an intern at the Bodakai Chamber of Business, and I got to interview one of its past presidents, Mr. Leo Bowman. I've recently come across the recording of that interview, and on the voice note, he says that there are so many diseases, people are facing so many diseases these days, um, cancer, you name them, but he said that the most dangerous of them all was the loss of hope. And I found that to be very true because we have lost hope in our government. We've lost hope in our cities. We've lost hope in ourselves sometimes. You can go down Oxford Street and it doesn't look like the main street of this city because people don't want to do business here. People don't believe that the city or the government can be salvaged, so they choose to leave, which means that they have no hope in this place. But... This program has revived my own hope, and I've started to believe that things can change and that I can be a part of that change. I think that my fellow participants will agree with me when I say that we have been handed the tools to become the change in our workplaces, to, 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 to lead in our own lives, and to lead in our own communities. A while ago, I had a conversation with my Rotary mentor, Mr. Stephen Kitt. I don't know if he's here. Okay. He's on Zoom. Uh, cool. Anyway, I had a conversation with him <laughs> about Ubuntu, and I was telling him that where I come from, Etembini, I come from Etembini, a small village outside of King Williamstown on your way to Staterheim. Anyway, where I come from, you don't pass people without greeting. Even if they're strangers, you have to acknowledge everyone that you meet. And here we weren't taught to go around greeting everyone because city people are gonna think there's a room upstairs. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I was reminded of those values and the importance of seeing the people around you as humans, being interested in their stories, their struggles, and their dreams and their hopes. This not only helps us build relationships, but teaches us to appreciate our diversity, live in harmony with each other, and work together because it doesn't matter what your position or role in your organization or community is, in order to function effectively, you need to be in sync with the people around you. Um, another thing I'd like to say is that all 20 of us were lucky to have been a part of this program this year because it was a really scary time. 
for the whole country and the entire world. People lost their jobs, companies lost large sums in income, and many lives were lost. Through all that chaos, we were together learning about how to confront and manage our emotions while staying sane in, diff in difficult situations. Why is this not ending? <laughs> Um, to make my next point, I'd like to share a quote from a song by a group called The Internet, the American band. Uh, the line is, to win in spite of struggle implies much greater magnification to one's honor, which I value more than instant gratification. This line rang in my head after one of our sessions where the speaker was um, Kim Van Ketz. She was telling us about how delayed gratification had helped her through her countrywide expedition, Try the Beloved Country. We are a generation that is obsessed with the word instant. Instant messaging, instant replies, instant delivery, instant success, instant porridge. And we get frustrated when things don't happen instantly for us. But I was affirmed here that it's okay to wait and be resilient in the face of adversity. As a leader, you will not always get things right the first time or the 999th time, but when you do, it will be rewarding. To sum up my experience and the lessons I learned on leadership, I would say that it is everything I watched while growing up. Um, we were raised mostly by our grandparents who had little education or no education, little monetary or material positions, but the community functioned well because the elders saw and respected each other. They understood each other's struggles and were always there to uplift each other. We too can have thriving organizations, healthy relationships, build well-functioning cities and communities. But first we need to be concerned, we need to stop being so concerned with ourselves, be kinder to each other, charge towards our goals with the mentality does that despite failure, eventually we will get things right. Most importantly, always remember that people are the essence of it all. I am truly grateful to my employer, the Bodakai Chamber of Business, for giving me this opportunity, for allowing me to come here on those Fridays. I'd also like to thank um, every one of my fellow participants uh, for the amazing contribution they made to my life, and Greg, Kerry, the speakers, um, my mentors. And I can safely say that I have found my voice, even if it's trembling. And I hope that from here on, I'll grow more confident, more resilient, and take a more, a more active role in changing the world around me. Thank you so much. Thank you.